Even as a youngster, Anthony Dottillo was all about bulk and raw power. The term shredded was not even on his radar. That was sissy stuff. Dottillo was well known as one of the biggest proponents of power rack training ever, but he was no one trick pony. Anthony claimed to be drug-free, and I do not dispute this claim. He strongly believed that sufficiently hard training and large quantities of high-quality foods were the keys to real power and mass. Guys like Dottillo, Merjanian, Ahrens, Hepburn, Anderson and others did not rely on synthetic hormones to propel their strength gains, though maybe a few dabbled in the dark arts experimentally. Dottillo talked about doing eight or ten sets of singles or doubles, like the West Side idea using this kind of rep scheme for speed work, only he never mentioned changing the speed of the reps. Another concept was the single, double, and triple progression system. Adding reps alone, sets alone, or weight used alone was the single progression system while adding two of these at same time would be the double progression system, and of course, adding in all three realms represents the triple progressive system. The most brutal and challenging of all. Dottillo did not use any fancy new ideas. Just the tried and true old school stuff that had worked so well for the greats that paved his way. Dottillo said that the road to body mass was paved with heavy work on the thighs, hips, and lower back, and he paid homage to the older Peary Raider 20 rep squat program, as did many of the era. Doing breathing style pullovers right after the 20 breathing squats was said to contribute to a massive rib cage, underpinning a huge chest. As seen in the side chest poses of Dottillo and Doug Hepburn. One of the methods espoused by Dottillo was called isometronics, really just an interesting application of isometric power rack work, consisting of two or three series of different sections of a lift being worked separately. Several sets of low rep work, with an isometric push slash hold at the top of each rep being done followed by one more rep attempt in this shorter zone. So several sets like this for bottom, mid, and top of the range of motion, and then two or three sets of regular, full range of motion reps to finish. While most rack work had consisted of moving the weight from wherever the pins were set to the lockout position. Setting up two sets of pins and pushing against the higher set for a few seconds added a whole new dimension to the intensity. Terry Todd was another big advocate of power rack training. Partial range of motion sets were part of most or all of the early mass monsters routines. They all agreed that partials alone was not the answer, but these must be done along with full range of motion reps in the same workout. Some tried entire training cycles focused on just super heavy partials, but found this was inferior to cycles incorporating both types of sets. Anthony Dottillo wrote a column for the Great Ironman magazine from the late 60s through the 80s, and two great books, for which reprints are available from Bill Hinburn's Super Strength Training site. A long-time training partner and friend was Deja Ban, a former elite-level Olympic lifter, and his name was later referenced along with Dottillo's on the Dottillo blog, where many of Anthony's writings can be found, along with tons of other great material. 